a very good evening to all of you so today we are going to understand the oscillator using the operation amplifier we have already studied this oscillator in the third unit now uh, as you know that the oscillator is a device which is going to oscillate at a particular frequency it means that the output of an oscillator will be oscillating at one particular frequency and it depends upon the selection of the resistor and the capacitor which are the passive component which we are using in the oscillator circuit. So basically this oscillator is based on the Barkha Hussein criteria of sustained oscillation and as per the Barkha Hussein criteria two condition needs to be satisfied. The first one is the magnitude of uh, the uh, the feedback gain and the forward gain should be equals to 1 and the phase shift around the loop that is uh, the phase shift around this uh, amplifier and this uh, feedback path should be equals to 1 uh, 0 or 360 degree so if these two conditions will be satisfied then you can say that the system will be eligible for uh, the oscillator so now uh, there are two types of oscillator the phase shift oscillator and uh, the second one is the wind bridge oscillator which is there in your syllabus so now uh, in this case in the phase shift oscillator you can see the inverting amplifier is used so when the inverting amplifier is used it means the gain will be minus rf upon r1 rs upon r1 fine uh, it means that you are having uh, the inverted output uh, and this inverted output will be given to the feedback system as you know that in the phase shift oscillator you are having three rc network and this uh, three rc network is going to provide a phase shift of 180 degree already we have obtained a phase shift of 180 degree due to this inverting amplifier and uh, according to the Barkha Hussein criteria, we will have to make uh, the phase shift of uh, 360 degree. So in that case, you will have to insert 3 RC network. Because if you are going to put 2 RC network, then each RC network has to provide a phase shift of 90 degree, which is practically impossible. So in that case, we have used uh, um, the 3RC network. And uh, depending upon the selection of the resistor and the capacitor, you can have the particular frequency. So we'll try to obtain the frequency of the sustained oscillation and the amplifier gain uh, for the phase shift oscillator. So now you can uh, un you can see that uh, there's an RC network. Now when you apply input to this uh, RC network, what you are going to get uh, now, you can see capacitor is a passive element, resistor is a passive element. So you will be having some integral differential type of equation if you write an equation in the time domain. So for that, you will have to convert it into the S domain. So uh, what we have done, this output voltage will be equal to because we are going to uh, see the output across this R. You can see here, this output will be given to the first CR network and the output of first CR network will be acting as the input to the second CR network and similarly the output of the second CR network will be given to the third CR network and this is the uh, feedback which we are uh, giving it to the uh, amplifier you can see here there is no input connected initially you will have to excite the system and after excitation you will have to remove the input so then your feedback voltage will be sufficient to drive the oscillator so in this case vf vf means what the voltage across resistance and this will be measured with respect to this point and the ground so uh, this is okay this is uh, vf so now uh, you will be getting the 60 degree phase shift by using first uh, CR, then second CR and third CR. So around 180 degree phase shift will be obtained. There are some advantages also which are associated with the phase shift oscillator that in this case no inductor will be used. As you know that uh, inductor is uh, very much bulky and heavier as compared to the resistor and the capacitor. So we have not used any inductor. 
So we can say that uh, the size of the oscillator is very small and it is well suited for the frequencies. I, I can say it is well suited for the audio frequencies, not for the radio frequencies because with uh, R and C you can only obtain the frequency in the range of uh, audio. Uh, that is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz so this is well suited for a frequency which is below 10 kilohertz and after solving the derivation you are going to obtain the uh, frequency as 1 upon 2 pi rc under root of 6 this we have already derived in the third unit but we'll try to uh, find it again by using the uh, operational amplifier here you are you have used operational amplifier as an amplifier in that case uh, you have used transistor as an amplifier and that too in this common emitter configuration there are some uh, disadvantages also which are associated with the phase shift oscillator the first one is that you have used a passive element and every passive element will be having a certain life and they always come with a tolerance system. You know that uh, in that in with the life, uh, the resistor value and the capacitor value might get changed. So in that case, you are not going to have the constant frequency throughout your life. So these are some advantages which are there with uh, the uh, phase shift oscillator. Anyways, we'll be trying to uh, we'll try to find uh, the frequency that is the frequency of the oscillation so what is amplifier gain amplifier gain will be v0 upon vf and beta beta means feedback gain feedback means what here output will be acting as an input to the feedback circuit and this is the vf so beta will be equals to what it will be vf upon uh, vf upon v0 Fine. So you can see I have just uh, you know modified this, not modified the circuit. I have redrawn the circuit in a different manner. So you can see that we cannot have the time domain analysis. So we have just converted all the passive elements into the F domain. So this will be V0 of S. Uh, this C. How you can convert C into the S domain? It will be converted as one upon C S. Now similarly we have. So you can see here three loops are there. This one is the first loop, second loop and third loop. So three loops, three equations will be there and you will have to solve uh, the uh, in the uh, by using the matrix um, uh, concepts. So first one will be if you apply the KVL in the first loop. So what will be the uh, equation? So V0 will be equals to, uh, you will have to add the uh, because these are the impedances now when you convert the elements into the s domain they will act as the impedances they will not uh, be that element uh, anymore so this will be one upon sc plus r into i1 minus r into i2 just we just have to apply the kvl i think this is already covered in the na so by solving uh, by applying kvl and uh, just modifying and uh, uh, doing some adjustment you are going to have these three equations so we'll be writing these three equations in the matrix form so you can see here by using a Kramer rule we have to find this so this is the first entry that is 1 upon cs plus r which i have written and this is the uh, coefficient which is attached with the i1 um, now this is minus r is 0 and this one is i1 i2 i3 there is no i3 in the first loop because you can see here this first loop is between uh, this um, uh, this i1 is between uh, this one first and the second loop so there is no uh, existence of uh, the i3 so after solving all this, uh, you can see uh, what you want to what you want to uh, have. You want to uh, get uh, because you can see here. Uh, you will have to find the determinant of a matrix, which is very simple. Determinant of matrix will be uh, D will be equals to. Uh, you can just have this in the mod form and you will get so basically our aim is to obtain beta will be equal to Vf upon V0. Fine. So in that case, your main focus will be on the third loop only. 
so you will have to calculate the value of i3 so how i3 will be calculated i3 will be equals to d3 upon how i3 will be calculated i3 uh, just a minute i3 will be calculated as i3 will be equals to d3 upon d so this is the determinant of a matrix now how d3 will be obtained d3 will be obtained very easily d3 means what you just have to put uh, this um, you can say uh, this column into your third column and it means that you will have to replace the third column elements by this uh, v00 and 0 so in this way so you can uh, calculate you can uh, here you can see uh, the d3 will be calculated so now you will be having a d3 uh, is calculated d is calculated so you just have to divide these two and uh, similarly i3 will be equals to this value fine now what is a vf vf will be equals to what you can just uh, go through that um, um, circuit vf will be equals to what this i3 will be interacting with the r and you can see vf is between this point and this point so what we can write vf will be equals to i3 into r so a uh, vf will be equals to i r into i3 so this will be uh, the last equation so v0 will be here only this we work a vf upon v0 now you can see that s will be equals to what s will be equal, s can be written as j omega so s will be equals to s will be equals to j omega now suppose if you take the square of it then what will be the value j omega whole square that is j square into omega square so it will be minus omega square now similarly if you are having j cube so in that case it will be j omega 3 so this one will be j cube and omega cube how can you write j uh, j3 because we want a real value so in that case i think it will be j square into j into omega cube so this one will be minus 1 so minus j into omega 3 so this is what we have written here minus j into omega 3 and you know that uh, uh, according to the barca hussein criteria a beta will be equals to 1 so mod ab will be equals to uh, 1 or you can say the angle will be equal to 0 or 360 degree what does this mean it means that there is no imaginary part uh, there should not be any imaginary part in any of the equations but here you can see that we have obtained the imaginary equations you can see that minus j will be there then uh, minus j is there so you will have to uh, you know eliminate this minus j so how you can eliminate so uh, divide this uh, uh, divide this numerator by this value divide this numerator by this value and this denominator by this value it means that dividing numerator and denominator by minus j omega cube into r cube into c cube so after solving all that well, this is the thing which you are getting so one upon this one uh, just a minute i'll rub it now you can uh, clearly it is clearly visible to you people it is clearly visible this will be cancelled up so this will come first one minus five so you can see here you have got uh, uh, the uh, two terms which are real and two terms which are not real fine so uh, these two terms are real and uh, these two terms are not real so what we can say that this the value should be equal to zero now the value should be equals to zero so the value of uh, this uh, value will be equals to zero so we'll just take it outside and we'll try to understand this uh, thing this is six upon j omega rc will be equals to sorry plus uh, j upon omega cube into r cube into c cube will be equal to zero so this one will be minus j into six omega into rc plus j into omega cube into r cube into c cube will be equal to zero j and j will get cancelled up so you are having six upon omega rc one upon omega cube r cube and c cube so this will get cancelled up so six will uh, will be equals to one upon that is omega that is omega square uh, omega square it 
r square and c square so omega square will be equals to 1 upon 6 into r square plus 6 square so this one will be f will be equals to 1 upon 2 pi uh, rc under root of 6 so in this way you can have the frequency of the sustained oscillations for the rc phase shift oscillator fine so i think this is the, th uh, the same thing which we have found out um, now the beta value will be equals to what uh, the beta value you will have to evaluate uh, so this is uh, the beta value a beta a beta will be equals to what beta will be equals to beta so after making this as zero beta will be equals to uh, this value beta will be uh, 1 upon 1 minus 5 upon omega r omega r square into c square fine now you will have to just uh, you know equate this value with the 6 so i think this one will be 1 upon 1 minus 5 into 6 that is 39 uh so 30 minus 30 that will be minus 1 upon 29 fine this one will be minus 1 upon uh, 29 why why it has come minus 1 upon 29 because the amplifier gate we have used the operational amplifier as an inverter and um, inverter means what the output will be inverted so already you have got the phase shift of 180 degree and to satisfy the barca hussein criteria you will have to provide the additional phase shift and for that only the three rc elements have been used so uh, a beta will be equals to mod a beta will be equals to one so a uh, this one will be one upon 29 will be equals to one so a you will be having a 29 so this is the gain this i think this gain you will have to set uh, for the amplifier only then you will be able to realize the uh, rc phase shift oscillator so i think this is all for uh, today's um, rc phase shift oscillator we'll meet in the next class thank you